Hello there! I'm Delta Dynamite, and today we're going to be going to the moon. But not just straight to the moon, um, we're going to the moon, I'm also taking some rovers. Ooh, look at them, look how shiny they are. So, um, I've already made this journey once, but <sighs> for some reason I ended up landing on the dark side of the moon, which means that my um, rovers were not powered, because the dark side of the moon never faces the sun. Uh, so they couldn't go anywhere, and I was stuck. So this time, we're going to go around, we're going to land on the right side of the moon, and I'm just going to talk through the the technique of actually getting yourself up there, because I know that a lot of people struggle with it. There are some good tutorials out there, but I thought I'd do one with the way I do it, because you can just guess. <laughs> I'll show you what I mean. But um, we should start off by having a look at what I've built. So, well, down here is stage one. Well, you don't start building here. You start building at the top. So you've got a normal pod. Uh, it's just an MK12 command pod. On top of it, I have a docking station. Not sure why. Uh, I just decided to use that. This here is a uh, a big unit of fuel, and so are these that power these little thrusters. So if you look in propulsion, I believe that's where this is. Down here somewhere. In this area, it's there. That's it. RCS fuel tank, FLR1, and then some little RCS fuel tanks. Stratus V roundified monopropellants. So they power these, and that's really useful for positioning yourself. Then we've got two big fuel tanks. Uh, that is this one, a Rockamax X200. So we've got two of them just straight in a row next to each other. Um, and these uh, work for this and for the bottom rocket as well. This one's this one's like for the bottom rocket, and this one is for these. Actually, they're both for these. They're both for these, but nothing's down here. Right, so then um, some lights for when we're landing. That's quite important to remember to keep lights when you're landing. Around the edges, we have these little rockets, which are the Rockamax Mark 55 radial mounts. Um, landing struts, very useful. And we've got a big disconnector here, and this is connected to one, two, one, two there. So there's two there with a the little rocket beneath them that you can't see and that is a mainsail liquid engine. So there's two of those and a mainsail. Then beneath there, there is uh, another two? Or three, perhaps. Yeah, three. Three Rocket Max fuel tanks, and then another mainsail engine. The reason I'm using these liquid fuel tanks, it, rather than using the big jumbo fuel tanks, is because the jumbo fuel tanks overheat really easily. So it's easier to put some of these in a row. Um, round the edges connected, I have one, two, three, and I've lost four, five, one, two, three, four, yeah, five. I have five of those fuel tanks up there. Wings for stability, uh, mainsail engines on the bottom. Um, now, these are connected in an interesting way. Let's see, no, you can't really see it. But um, if I zoom in, if you look here, we've got fuel pipes going from here to here, and then from here to here, and this is mirrored on the other side. We have one from here to here and from here to here. What this does is that it means that we can break them away in such a way, like, uh, as they run out. So we run them to all together, all the engines are turned on, and then the two on the right and the left, which are connected in first, these will run out of fuel first, because they are providing fuel for this engine, this engine, and this engine. So they run out because they've only got one fuel source, whereas this has two, and this has three. So. There is a name for this, I can't remember, there's, there's like a proper name for what I'm doing, but I, I have no idea what it is. So this runs out, and then you can break it off, and then this runs out, then you can break it off. So as you can see, I've got a break off here that just breaks off that these two opposites. And then I just break off those two, and then I can break off the middle. So um, the way that works is it, it just basically maximises your fuel consumption. I've picked something up, is this, have I detached this? What is it? It's a little tiny fuel. It's, it's probably something new. So that's what that is. This is just holding it up. Um, this rocket is quite wibbly wobbly. I'm going to go for wibbly wobbly as being the word. Um, but it, it should be okay. And I will talk through getting us into orbit as we go. Uh, I should probably talk about my little rovers. I've made some little rovers. They are basically um, made of flat panels, like the construction panels. They've got these little wheels on the side because they're quite small and light. Four, four battery packs, some lights pointing backwards and forwards, um, control module, and solar panels for power. Um, 
they're connected via one of these further away breakaway things. So when I've landed, they they fall away from the, the last disconnection. But what you know, what you might notice is that I have a normal disconnector here, and then a a big disconnector here. The reason for that is that this big disconnector sometimes breaks and kind of stays stuck on to the to the buggy. So that disconnector makes sure that it falls off and they both go at the same time. So that's my little buggies. Uh, we're going to give them a go. So uh, I've pretty much gone through everything. Nose cones. Uh, I didn't mention the nose cones. Nose cones are important. I haven't got any ladders, which means that my kerbals can't really get out of the ship uh, on the moon because they won't be able to get back up again. Um, but that should be fine. Obviously, we've got an SAS module there because you need that. Put an SAS module on it. And that's everything. So, time to launch. Now, before every launch, you've got to remember turn on your SAS. And throttle up. Throttling up is quite important as well. I, I forgot. Right, so as you can see, it is a little bit wibbly wobbly. Um, but that's okay. Um, so we'll see where we get. Now, Straight on to the important stuff. Um, you may notice that as we start to come off, our apostas is increasing. Now the apos, apos, uh, that thing, apoapsis. I'm going to call it the apoapsis. Is the highest point of your curve, your circle that you're going to make. Um, so that's what that is. And the periostasis, or whatever it's called, is the the lowest point. So if you hover over them, it tells you the distance. So basically. As you're going up, the time to this should be increasing, and its height should be increasing. If it isn't, you're crashing into the ground. Uh, so that's what you want. As you're going up, the thing that you really want to be watching is your atmosphere level. Now as you can see, if you look at my fuel, some of my fuel tanks are about to run out. So I'm going to break those off. There, they've gone now. So those two will break off, but you can see my fuel is back to full again. And you can see that we are overheating a little bit, but not enough to worry about. Uh, it's hardly anything. So so that's what that fuel system does. It means that some of them break off earlier, which is, is quite useful. Right, so you need to be looking at your atmosphere. You don't really want to start turning at all until about 12,000. And at that point, you want to turn a little tiny bit. Um, but back to what I was talking about. Basically, um, that's your highest point of your circle. Now, if we zoom out and look at the moon, we can see that its orbit is going this way. Now the easiest way to get to the moon is to match its orbit. We don't want to end up orbiting like this guy is because he's not in line and to get to the moon from this orbit is a lot more difficult than from a circular orbit that matches the orbit of the moon. So to do that we want to make sure that we only turn towards the right on this little thing because that's the right direction. So we're at 17,000 so I'm going to start turning. Um, when turning, obviously turn off your SAS um, but try to use um, the ball to turn rather than looking at the aircraft because looking at the aircraft you'll get confused so turn it off you see how we've started to tilt that could be problematic wow wow okay I'm gonna hold it there because I think we're gonna form a uh, an orbit that I don't really want here yeah you see we're, we're not quite straight but it's, it's close enough, I mean. Right, so now we're well up into the atmosphere. They're about to run out. Okay, so now we should be a lot less wibbly wobbly, and I should be able to control us a bit better. So we want to turn off the SES, tilt ourselves to the right and up a bit. Yep, 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 that's all good. As you can see, we're not forming a circular orbit because. Uh, I want to go. Bloody hell. Controlling this thing is hard. It's a bit wibbly wobbly. I said it was a bit wobbly, wibbly wobbly. It's always been a problem. There. Right. Hopefully, this should correct us. So, if you just put it to the right, it'll help you. You'll go into a good orbit. I've got a bad orbit going on here. Um, but it shouldn't be so bad. Right. We really want to tilt ourselves now into a good angle. So. Get yourself going over, because we're way into the atmosphere now. We should pretty easily be able to get ourselves into an orbit. And to get yourself into an orbit, you want to hit the equator line. 
which uh, we're heading towards here, you can see it on the little ball. Um, so yeah, always use the little ball. People use other things too much. Use the little ball. And when you hit it, just hit T. SES will keep you pointing at it. We are going to form a very, very out of sync orbit here. Um, so you'll get to see what it's like to try and correct one of those, because I'm going to have to. Um, this is really wibbly wobbly. <laughs> Please run out of fuel faster so I can stop you from being so wibbly wobbly. Right. Okay, that fuels out, runs to the next fuel tank. That has repositioned us a little bit. That's okay. Right, so now you can see these little guys are working to keep us. Um, I've pressed R to turn on those. Um, because when you're in space, wings don't work, so I don't have any wings. We are so out of orbit, it is untrue. Look at that. That's really not not good. I'm going to struggle. Right, we can talk about the uh, the orbits now. Basically, there it is. Um, when you're orbiting, to increase your orbit, like to increase the height of your orbital points, you want to f boost in the direction of your speed. So I've popped it on there. That That is the direction of our speed, that little green thing. So if I pop on the map down and wait until I reach the apostasis in seven minutes. Now, of course, I don't actually have to wait for this because I can speed up time. So let's do that. When we're getting close to the apostasis, that is the best point at which to boost to increase your orbit. So if you don't get it perfect first time, try it now. So we put ourselves onto the direction of our velocity and boost. And as you can see, this is very quickly increasing the other side of our orbit. Um, in order for it to be safe, we want the other side of our orbit to be around 70,000 meters above the Earth. Um, otherwise, we will crash, probably. So there it goes. And our periapsis has appeared. So it's a 50,000, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100... We'll get it up to about 200 and then we'll stop. Alright, that's close enough for me. Okay, it's at 200,000 meters. So, now we're in a stable orbit around, uh, around Kerbal. Now, to the moon. So, th there are two points at which we could try to intersect with the moon from this orbit. Um, as you can see, we're here. we don't have a whole lot of fuel, so hopefully we'll be able to make it. We might not. I've done pretty badly with this. But anyway, if we check our map, basically, um, we're going to do a kind of a fake slingshot. So we're orbiting around in this here. Now, we want to reach this line either here or here, because when we're at this point, we can fire our boosters, increase the size of this orbit, and send ourselves outwards like this. And we can do the same on the opposite side to bring ourselves back around here. But if we did something here, we would go downwards. Like, if we did something at this point, we would go down here somewhere, which is nowhere nearer the moon from where we are. Um, so that is why an orbit that's equal to this is preferable. Well, let's have a look. So this is where you want to start using uh, these things, maneuvers. So maneuvers are a bit confusing. And I don't quite get them, but... Basically, I, the thing that I do get is that this is your direction of velocity and this is against your direction of velocity. So we know that we want to increase the opposite side of the orbit to go further. So we want to boost in the direction of our velocity. And that's what that does. So, if we get this enough... Oh, there we go. So this purple bit is when we get a contact with the moon. Now we're nowhere near close to it at that point, but if we drag it back, I believe we're a bit closer. So where it says PE, there you go, we're in 197,000 meters of the moon at that point. So, th we've basically gotten lucky with this. So, um, orange is where we'll go at first. Down here. And then if we just left it, we would get close to the moon here, but then hit a new orbit. We don't want that to happen, but we're going to change that when we reach the moon. Now, we want to try and land on the bright side of the moon. Now if you look at it, at this point, the bright side of the moon is this side, the inside. 
So that is absolutely perfect. And that is exactly where we want to be. 164,000 meters. We're on the inside of the moon facing the sun. So that's what we're going to do. We got lucky with our orbit. Now, now you've got to understand how these burn things work. So they're quite useful and they try to help you out. Basically, I've made a marker. I've made a marker at this point. Now the game's telling me at this point you need to increase your speed by 700 meters a second. And it says that here. Um, it tells me how long it is until I reach the node and how long it reckons I'm going to have to burn. This value is usually pretty off. I don't, I don't know what it's based on. You also have to boost in the direction of this little blue marker. So, you want to get your uh, get yourself pointed at that blue marker. And then when you reach the node, burn for about the amount of time. I mean, it's... Usually you can work out how long it takes you to burn to get to a certain speed. So we're going to assume 700 meters a second is, I don't know, it's a bit of burning. I'm not really sure. But the point is that this is just a rough guide. Basically, if you do something like that, then you'll end up in the right place. So you just want to get it about right. Um, worth noting that the game has a quick save feature. Um, so... I believe it's no F9 is load last. Is it F5? Yes, F5. So if you press F5, your game will quick save, and if you hold F9, you will load that quick save. So you can have multiple attempts at these maneuvers to try and get them right if you're not happy with how it goes the first time. So we are currently orbiting, and let's get ourselves around the other side of the Earth. Right, so we're now about two minutes away from the node. Um, you want to be careful with, with your burn here, because I am not entirely sure. It's best to do this on the world map. So if you just pop this, it's a little. usually it'll look like this. If you just tick this button, it'll, uh, it'll pop up. And the reason I say this is because you can watch your orbit change as you boost. So you can think, alright, oh, I need to do it a bit more or a little bit less. And you'll see exactly what's going to happen, so it's really useful for that. Uh, so, one minute and a half. We'll just speed it up a little bit. Um, I reckon this is going to take about 12 or so seconds to boost. But if I do it early, it doesn't matter. So, let's start it now. So you can see this, this decreasing. It's probably going to take longer than I thought it was, so it's a good job I started early. And you can see our orbit changing here. And what will hopefully happen, if we've done it about right, is it will eventually come out to match this. Now, um, it's looking good at the moment. We have, we're still approaching the node, I believe. I don't think we've reached it yet. So this is going to be pretty much bang on, probably. Should have done it a little bit earlier than that, so that gives you a bit of an idea. It was probably about half a minute, that or something. So we're almost at the right speed. You can see our orbit reaching it. You could of course do this blind without using the node system, but um you have to be pretty crazy, right? So we want to be careful here, not go too far. Yep. So we've we've gone bad. We haven't quite I'm kinda of missing. Where to fix this of course is to boost away from your own velocity. So if we turn around to oppose our own velocity. What's that? Too far, too far. Be careful with this stuff. Right, there it is. So uh, we boosted too much, and that was my fault. I should have slowed down earlier. But now this should, whoa, really quickly fix it. But see, you want to be super careful. Right. That's that's close enough to the moon. We'll probably make it from that. 378,000 meters and when we get to this point we're gonna make another thing and boost ourselves into the moon and see how much fuel we have basically no fuel I'm supposed to be landing with these so I'm probably not gonna be able to land because I've wasted lots of fuel correcting my course and things like that um, but you'll get to see how to make it to the moon so now we're heading off on this orbit, um, let's speed up time and have a look at what it's like. Oh, not that much. Sometimes you can go a bit crazy. So, 
See, we're going away from the Earth, and the Moon is is somewhere. Where is it? Oh, it's there. There it is. So we're slowly but surely heading towards that. So we can speed up time a little bit more. Right, so now is the sort of time we want to start thinking about getting a manoeuvre to get us onto the actual moon. So we can see what's going on better now. It's going to be on our left. Oh! You know what? We might not have to do a manoeuvre at all. That's very interesting. The moon has basically pulled us in here. Uh, but I don't think it's going to pull us right in. I think we're going to have to do something. Uh, well, we go. I don't know whether it needs that much oomph. Because we can probably just do that. No, that's just as much oomph. But basically we want to do something along those lines and push ourselves towards the moon. Um, and once it gets us in its, in its grab... I mean, it won't take anything like as much as we think it will, because the moon is pulling us in anyway, so you only need to boost towards it a little bit and you end up on it. Right, so about now we can think about doing this boost. So turn off your SAS by tapping T. Point yourself towards the blue thing. Hit T. And we're ready to go when we're in the right place. A little bit of time warping. Right, so... Well, there's no use in waiting. Let's have a go. So I don't want to use too much fuel up, because we still need to land. You can see we're on the light side of the moon, which is nice. And... we are almost there. That is a moon collision. We are going to punch the moon in the face. Where's the moon? Moon. Oh, there he is. Thought it should have been big then. Okay. So we're gonna we're flipping around the light side. So we're gonna land just on the edge of the light side. You can kinda see that happening. We're gonna be probably around this area here. So this bit's pretty fun to watch. I like watching this. So let's speed up time and zoom in. Look at that. How very cool. Okay, so as you approach the moon, you want to be kind of careful, because bad stuff can happen. As you're approaching the moon, you want to boost away from your own velocity. So basically face away from the moon. Um, and it's just there. Pop it up a bit, pop it up a bit. Ooh, right there. And now is about the point where you want to be saving so you can be prepared to uh, potentially accidentally crash into the moon which does happen I do it all the time right okay, so we're at 130,000 feet so as we're approaching you basically just want to be conservative with fuel while keeping yourself at a sane speed um, I think it's it's good to start boosting pretty far away I don't have enough fuel to risk it so I'm going to wait a little bit before I start boosting but if you had more fuel than me, if you were up here somewhere, I'd be like, yeah, boost now. <laughs> Just get a little bit of a burn on and slow yourself down. We're going to wait until about uh, 50,000-ish. Once again, you don't need wings here because uh, these guys work perfectly fine on the moon. Alright, we're about 50,000. So let's boost up and decrease our speed. You can see that we're not really travelling down towards the moon. We're travelling along with it. This makes it extremely difficult to land. So you always want to try and decrease your speed as much as possible to get this over here or on the other side so, you, so your speed is working away from the moon. So as you're falling down it's important to make sure that you keep altering where you're boosting to match the opposite direction to your velocity because this will keep slowing you down like the maximum amount. It will keep moving towards the centre point and just keep following it along and that will keep slowing you down nicely. We might be going a bit fast, but we should be okay. Maybe 50,000 feet is okay. You don't want to be boosting too much, as you can see I'm only throttling up a little bit, but that's because I'm worried about my fuel. You can just let yourself fall for a little bit once you get under 100,000, 100, not 100,000, 100 meters a second. So now I'm just going to cut off and let it fall. 
uh, because it's safe to do so. Um, I'm still 18,000 meters above, so I've got a long way to fall. Um, just keep it at a manageable speed, though. You don't want to be crashing in really fast for a landing. For when you actually touch the ground, you want to be beneath 10 meters a second. Otherwise, you're probably going to blow up. As you can see, because we're being pulled in by the moon, uh, this is coming towards this point. Hopefully it'll be there by the time we reach it. Uh, we're on the light side of the moon, so we don't need to bother turning these lights on, really. Uh, they might help see the surface, but it's not that important. As you can see, our speed isn't increasing that much. We've almost hit 200,000. I keep saying 1,000. We've almost reached 200, but, um... You know, we were at 100 ages ago, so... Just got to keep paying attention, because we are coming in quite hot. We're at 95,000, so I want to be boosting soon. 5,000. So here we're getting pretty close. Alright. So, decrease your speed. I'm going to run out of fuel and crash. Which is really irritating, because I'm so close. But, see, we're at 30, like 20 meters a second now, so I can stop boosting. We're also going quite straight, which is surprising. Very surprising. You know what? I might just, just make it, but it will be the closest, closest landing ever. Bloody hell. I might just not. This is going to be... I really don't know. The ground's there. I've either planned this absolutely perfectly, or, or something. Alright, we're drifting. So I'm going to turn us a little bit. Yeah, I think we're going to manage to land. You want to turn your SAS off as you hit the ground, otherwise... Oh, off. On, off. Ah! This bit's the hardest bit, by the way. You want to try and be going straight down. I'm drifting really fast, so... I'm trying to correct it, but it's really difficult to correct. Right, okay, we're going to let it drift. I'm just going to try and land, because I'm going to run out of fuel if I don't. Land, my baby! Oh god! Oh god, it's going to fall! It's going to fall! It's going down. But, on the upside, we are on the moon. I don't know if SES because it's just going to pee me off. So, we're sideways, but we landed with minimal fuel. Now then, this is the fun part. We're going to knock these guys off. So we have successfully landed on the moon and deployed two rovers. Now you may notice that these rovers are slightly topsy-turvy. Um, there are two ways of fixing this. Uh, I'm going to try the... I haven't tried this yet, but we're going to see. We're going to go to the Space Center. So you'll see that we now have some rovers. These are our two rovers, landed on the moon. Yeah, that's it. So we're going to take control of that. So, apparently... Oh, yes, it's falling off. Oh, good. Oh, bollocks. It just exploded. Oh, no, it seems to be okay. Something exploded, but it's not damaged. So we can't tip it over, which is... Irritating, but um, there's a way of tipping it over. We're gonna use a Kerbal, and then Mr. Lovely Mr. Kerbin. Where is my rover? Rovers, seriously. Where have my rovers gone? Well, the rovers seem to have decided that they they didn't fancy staying on the moon and have gone somewhere else. Really? You can't just disappear them. Okay, I'm going to just F9 and we're going to land again. This time we're going to get out as the Kerbins and we're going to push the rovers over onto the feet. And then I'm going to drive the rover away from whatever the hell exploded. So this is basically the bare minimum ship <laughs> pretty much to make it to the moon. I wasted a lot of fuel uh, in the orbit. So, you want to go to the moon, eh? Yeah, people tend to have problems with RCS fuel. Um, <laughs> I have a lot of RCS fuel. Um, RCS fuel is always useful. Especially if you're going to leave something in an orbit. 
Because if you just leave it there, it's going to correct itself and it's going to run out eventually, you know, so... Get yourself a lot of RS fuel on there. Especially for fueling stations and things like that, which, by the way, is a really good idea. Getting into the orbit around the Earth is the thing that uses the most fuel by a long way. So if you can get something orbiting the Earth with loads of fuel in it and fuel yourself up, that would immensely help you for everything. I might do a, a little video on that as well, uh, if you guys want it. I currently have an orbiting electricity station, which I quickly realised was quite pointless because electricity is easy to get everywhere. So I want to get a fuel station up there, so if I do that I'll record my, uh, my tryings. Right, we're getting pretty close now. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Balls, 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 balls. There you go. Lots of balls there. On the moon, as you can see. Right, we've got a pretty good approach here. Could only be ruined if I accidentally get us going in negative velocity, which does happen. Like if we start going away from the moon, it's quite easy to do. Never useful. Oh, see you nearly there then. So, as I said, as long as you're beneath 10 meters a second, you're usually okay. You don't want to be, definitely don't want to be above 12. That's like going, kill me now! And as we've seen, as long as you land somewhere straight, like nearly straight, you tend to not die. Even if you fall over. Oh, turn off SES! No, we're gonna go over! We're gonna go over! No! No, oppose the motion. Okay, we're down. Oh, I pushed us all the way over. Spin. So we're going to wait until we go to a rest before we break off the guides. Oh, there we go. Right, okay. I'm going to save now. So we can retry this uh, whole buggy thing. Right, break away the buggies. And then let's get out. I choose you. Oh, that buggy landed... Oh. Maybe that that's probably what happened. Okay, that buggy landed on its feet. Well done, buggy. Right, this has ended badly before trying to do this. Uh for both the Kirby and for the ship. Alright, get away, get away. Get away, Mr. Kirby. Okay. Oh Okay. I don't know what that explosion is, but both the rovers are okay. They're definitely there. Let's go to the space center. Let's fly. Now we are in control of our rover. Hopefully. Rover, it's in the floor. Please load. There we go. So let's check out these exposures. Yep, direct sunlight. So they should be charging. So if we turn on our light. How much? Nope, that doesn't use any. What about our rear light as well? Is that using it? Oh, we're good. That's good. We don't need them because it's bright, but there you go. So, what if we're driving then? Oh, oh, it's that way. Oh, okay, it's backwards. It drives backwards to what I thought it would. Oh, these are really difficult. Right. Go, buggy, go. So, how much charge? Oh, good. No problems. So there you go, we have successfully land- <laughs> We'll never get off, but we have successfully landed two buggies that work on the moon. And there's Kerbin, Mr. Mr. I can't read his name, Mr. What's his name? Mr. Stop! Ned Ming Kerman, just taking a nap there. Wow, wow, really? Okay, if I reverse my controls, then it drives forward. So backwards is forwards, left is right. <laughs> and it goes the right way. I'm going to try and stop this rover from just running away from me. So now we can do some experiments on the moon. Uh, because these buggies have experiment taking things installed. Maybe when they add some new stuff in. I'd like to be able to build a, an actual proper base on the moon. That'd be pretty good. So there you go, that was a kind of tutorial on how to kind of get to the moon and kind of put some buggies on it. Buggies! Ooh, and then you can have a rest. Um, if I was to suggest something, I'd say put the bigger wheels on, because these ones are... 
garbage. Look at that. Maybe put something to keep it from tipping up. Maybe just redesign the buggies, because my buggies aren't that great. <laughs> Fun, though. I mean, my wheelies are better than your wheelies. You know that. Oh, look at that wheelie. Look at that. Keep it going as well. Whoa. Whoa. Ooh, ooh, bit far, bit far. It's the wheelie bugger. This is, it was designed for this. This is what it's for. This is the only way to travel on the moon. Okay, so I have been Delta Dynamite. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that this has helped in some way. Some people, somewhere in the world, understand the thing that is Kerbal Space Program. Um, this has been a pleasure, and I'll see you.